It's almost 2020, and you know what that means. A presidential election is right around the corner. Now, for many congregations, the question arises, can we, or even should we, be engaged in the public dialogue and political process around the elections? If you think about it, public policy is about the way we order our common lives. And if you read closely in the scriptures, you will see that much of it is about how we order our common life, how we are to treat the stranger and the sojourner among us, how we are to treat people justly. It has everything to do about being in right relationship with each other so that we are in right relationship with God. So if the or rules that order our common life are, are not fair and not just, and we are not in right relationship with each other, then we are not in right relationship with God. So not only can we be involved in the public sphere and in the electoral process, we should be. What makes us unique as people of faith is that we can be a voice in the political process that is nonpartisan. It's important to make a distinction between political activity and being political, being involved in the public sphere, being involved in the conversation about the ways we order our common life, and being partisan, which is aligned with a particular ideology. As people of faith, what informs our what informs our approach to public policy and the way we order our common life is not any one particular party or ideology. It is our understanding of God through the scriptures and God's calling for us as human community. So still the question arises though, specifically, what are the things that congregations and individual members can and can't do in an election year? Joining us here is Heather Kimmel, our United Church of Christ Legal Counsel. And Heather, thank you for being with us to share um, so your expertise on the intricacies of 501c3 do's and don'ts for engaging in election campaigns. So my first question for you, Heather, is what if one candidate is clearly in opposition to all our church's values and one is clearly aligned? Do I, if I want to have one of them speak, do I have to invite everyone? Yes, Sandy, that is an example of a church being partisan if it would invite just the candidate that aligned with its values and not all of the candidates. To be in compliance with 501c3 requirements, a church is gonna to have to invite all candidates to speak on equal terms. Can I encourage my congregation to think long and hard before voting for a particular candidate or politician? So I think that encouraging your congregation to think long and hard before voting for a particular candidate probably falls within discouraging your congregation from voting for a particular candidate and would be considered partisan under the IRS rules. So no, a church cannot do that. If I invite candidates to a forum at the church, can I ask leading questions or provide them with talking points beforehand so that the message I want to get across does? No, you can't do that. Holding a candidate forum is really a way for the candidates to get their own message across, and a church cannot interfere with that, otherwise it would be considered political or interference with a political campaign. So you're going to have to let the candidates get their own message across. Can my youth group canvas for a particular candidate? The church youth group can't canvas for a particular candidate as a youth group. Individuals, of course, are free to canvas and volunteer for any political campaign that they want to volunteer for, but that can't be organized by the church. Can I accept a meeting from a candidate who has reached out to have an event at my church or have a private meeting with me? A pastor is always free to meet with any political candidates that they want to meet with, but they should be, be careful about making promises on behalf of the church. If a politician is an elected official and a candidate, can I criticize or praise something they've done from the pulpit? In this instance, I would recommend that you stay away from criticizing um, or even praising something that a candidate has done and instead talk about the current policies and whether we need to see changes in those policies when we're talking about issues of public policy. Can I use space in my church bulletin for specific information on an issue that's being raised in the campaigns. Absolutely, I think voter education is a responsibility of our churches and churches should feel free to use space in their bulletin to educate their congregation on the issues. What you want to avoid though is ascribing any particular issue to any particular candidate and describe a broad range of public policy issues when you do that voter education. 
If a candidate takes a view contrary to the stated values of my denomination, can I mention that in official capacity from the pulpit? No, a pastor can't do that on behalf of the church because that veers again into what we call partisanship, where that would discourage members of your congregation from voting for that candidate based on that misalignment with the church's values. So I can, I, but we can talk about the issues from the pulpit. You can definitely talk about the issues from the pulpit. Always do that in the context of the mission and the ministry of your church and what is important to you as a faith community. If a member of my congregation wants to hold a fundraiser for a candidate on church property and we rent it out for other occasions, is that okay? So that really depends. If your church just rents space for things like weddings and perhaps to nonprofit organizations whose values align with the church just to cover their costs, I would say that's probably not okay in this instance. However, if your church frequently rents space to commercial entities or on a regular basis to on a first come first serve basis to any group that wants to meet there on equal terms, then it probably is okay for that member to hold a fundraiser there. Just rem remember that you are going to have to give the same opportunity for anyone else who wants to hold a fundraiser there as well. I want to hold an issue forum at my church on issues, not candidates. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. I think churches and church, the membership of a church should have robust discussions on public policy issues. And although a particular candidate or a particular candidate's position might come up, so long as the church itself isn't taking a position on that candidate, then it's fine for members to discuss those thoughts with each other. A candidate wants to visit my church for Sunday service and give a message to the congregation. Is that electioneering? couple things about that. Yes, it is electioneering. Now, of course, a church could do that if it also invited all of the other candidates to deliver a message on Sunday morning. But my question is, does a church really want to give the space in the pulpit on a Sunday morning to a candidate for political office? You know, Heather, that's a really good point, because one of the things that makes our faith voice unique in the public sphere and in an election season is the fact that we are independent and nonpartisan and that we have the power to speak a prophetic voice to any and all parties and to any and all candidates. So maybe it's better to just allow members of the congregation to interact with candidates in other ways. I think that's right. I want to hold a voter registration drive in my church. Can I partner with a political party on their nonpartisan get out the vote efforts? No, a church can't do that. It should either do the get out the vote campaign and the voter registration drive. It should do that independently or perhaps partner with another nonpartisan community group in order to do that work. Can our church put a sign on its property advocating for the passing of a ballot initiative? So you bring up a really good point and maybe it's a point that a lot of churches don't know, is that churches actually can lobby. Under the IRS rules, churches can do things like contacting their legislators to advocate for ballot initiatives or even grassroots lobbying where it asks other folks to, to contact their legislatures about ballot initiatives. It can put signs on their property encouraging folks to, to vote for or against ballot initiatives. The only limit on that is that lobbying has to be limited to an insubstantial part of a church's activities. What is insubstantial has not been really defined by the IRS, but a good rule of thumb would be that it uses less than 5% of the church's money and time to do that. And you can really reach a lot of people with very little time and money now with social media um, and other initiatives in, in order to get that message across. Our church's pastor is running for office. Is there anything that I should be aware of? So again, you raise a really good point in that our pastors have their own voice and they should be allowed to exercise that voice, even to the extent of running for elected office if that is what they feel called to do. What is important for pastors who are running for elected office to keep in mind is that they cannot use the church as a platform or the church resources to assist them in their campaign. So they need to be clear about when they are speaking on behalf of the church and when they are speaking on behalf of their own candidacy. They are always going to be speaking on behalf of the church when they are using either church resources or the pulpit in, in passing on a message. 
And even when they are not using church resources or speaking at a church or at a church event, best practice would dictate that a pastor should say that they are speaking with their own independent voice and not on behalf of the church when they are doing that. And actually that brings up another good point is many pastors and even church employees may want to volunteer to mm. assist candidates in this election season. And those folks can certainly um, volunteer to help with election campaigns. They just need to make sure that they're not using church resources to do that. So we're not gonna send emails from the church email address. We're not gonna make posts on the church blog page about candidates. And we're not going to post on social media from the church's own social media site about our work with candidates. And so that also means then that church employees need to do that work on their own time. Absolutely. Uh, part of using church resources is using church work time. So let's not do that either. Churches are 501c3 organizations, which means that they have to comply with the Internal Revenue Services rules on political campaign intervention and limitations on lobbying. But by following a few rules, churches can effectively engage in the political process and still do legal and effective ministry in a political campaign season. The first rule is that churches can be political, but they can't be partisan. So this means you cannot discourage or encourage your congregants from voting for or against a particular candidate. And if you decide to extend an invitation to a candidate to speak to your church or provide resources to that candidate, give the same equal opportunity to all candidates in that race. The second rule is that churches cannot contribute to or fundraise for a political campaign. All church dollars have to be spent in accordance with 501c3, which means they have to be spent for a charitable purpose. Members, a pastor on their own, um, and other church leaders can contribute to political campaigns independently, but churches cannot contribute to a political fundraiser. The third rule is to pay attention to the limitations on lobbying. Churches can lobby, which means that they can advocate for or against the passage of ballot measures by contacting their elected officials or by encouraging their congregants to contact their elected officials or by even posting signs on church property. Churches just need to keep in mind that these activities should be an insubstantial part of their activities, which roughly means that a church can spend less than 5% of its time and money on lobbying. The final rule is that a church should distinguish its voice from its pastor's voice when appropriate. Our pastors have their own independent voices and should feel free to use those in a partisan way during an election, so long as they make it clear that they are not speaking on behalf of the church. A pastor will always be speaking on behalf of the church when a pastor is speaking at the church or at a church event. In other situations, the pastor should make it clear that they are speaking independently and not on behalf of their church.